Here's a few more examples where we want to tell whether the triangles are congruent by side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, HL, or none. In my first problem here with number seven, you can see that I already have two pairs of angles. These are both right angles, and these two angles with the one arc mark are marked the same as well. Notice that these two triangles also share a side. We know that a side is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Now, it might be tempting to think this is hypotenuse leg because of the right triangle, but we only have a hypotenuse here. We don't have any legs. What we do have, though, is two pairs of angles and a side. That means it's either ASA or AAS. To figure out which one it is, look at the position of the side. For ASA, the side has to be between the two angles. You can see here that my side is not the side that connects the 90 to the one arc. It's a separate, non-included side. Therefore, these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. On question eight here, we have three pairs of angles in the triangles congruent. We don't have any shared sides or anything that I could add for markings, so all I have is AAA. But angle, angle, angle does not work to prove that two triangles are congruent. Therefore, these are not congruent, and you can type in the word none. On question nine, we have one pair of congruent angles as marked here with these arc marks and one pair of congruent sides. We also have the two triangles touching one another so I can mark in my shared side. Now I have two sides and an angle. I just have to make sure that that angle is between my two sides. You can see here that this angle is right where the one tick mark side and the two tick mark side come together. So that's an SAS. The other triangle is the same. Therefore, these two triangles are congruent by side angle side. On question 10, we have one angle and one side, but we can also add in markings for that pair of vertical angles. So now I have two angles and a side, and this time, notice how the side here is the side that is between the two angles that are marked, the one with the one arc mark and the vertical one that I just added to my diagram. So this is an example of two triangles that are congruent by angle, side, angle, where we have two angles and the included side. Number 11 also has a pair of vertical angles that we can add to our diagram right here. And this time now I have two pairs of angles and I have a side. Notice how the side here though is not the side that connects the two angles. It's a non-included side, making this an example of triangles that are congruent by angle, angle, side. For our final example, number 12, Notice how the triangle on the top has two sides and an angle. So it's following the pattern of SSA because that angle isn't between the two sides. Now the bottom triangle is following the side angle side pattern because this time the angle is between the two sides. However, both triangles must follow the same pattern in order to use one of the congruent statements. And since SSA does not work, and these two do not match, that means that these two triangles are not congruent and you can type in the word none. This concludes lesson 4.4 to 4.6 congruent triangles review. I hope this has helped you review all of the different ways that we've learned to show triangles are congruent. Your homework assignment will be very similar to questions 1 through 12 that we went through in our interactive notebook where you'll be given a pair of triangles and you'll have to state if you have enough information to show they're congruent by one of our five postulates, or if it doesn't match any of those, you'll choose none. So thanks for watching and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye.